All right. So next up, we've got Rob D'Angelo. He's uh, going to do an image breakdown, kind of not typically the way I've done the breakdowns before. Uh, we're going to do it just a little bit different because I've got some other images to share um, with his work. But uh, with that, please introduce yourself, Robert. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're from. Sure. What's going on, guys? Um, Rob D'Angelo um, out of uh, Westchester, New York, summer specifically. Um, first off, I do want to say Jason Bernhardt, Jason Page, Johnny Griffin, thank you again for this opportunity and everything you've done for not only me, but everyone in uh, this incredible community. So thank you for everything. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm out of uh, Westchester, New York. Um, by day, I am a digital designer of motor, uh, marketing department, um, graphic designer, um, art director. Um, and then, you know, at night playing with the lights. Um, <laughs> so I've uh, been shooting, I would say maybe 12, 13 years now, um, primarily doing a lot of landscape photography. Um, I really kicked off when my son was born. I really got, you know, I want to get a camera, I started doing that kind of stuff and um, kind of became like the sport photographer for my son when he's playing lacrosse and stuff. But um, primarily landscape, I started dabbling in light painting like a little bit way back. Um, it was about 2020 with COVID. That's when it really kind of kicked off. We're all stuck at home. I was looking for something to do. I was experimenting with a ton of different things, water drop photography, um, just all types of things. And I, and I really started getting a little bit more into light painting. And um, I started doing these messages, right, um, during COVID, like just, um, you know, out in my backyard, took like flashlights, ended up getting uh, the light writers from like painting brushes, and just doing these words, um, inspirational words during that time. And um, I ended up entering the, um, the contest that you guys had going, the message of thanks, where I had the thank you with the EKG. Um, but it was really since then, I just, I, I fell in love with it. Um, you know, it, it was something about the light painting and, and the love for landscape photography and trying to mix the two. Um, and I've been, I've been doing it ever since. And I absolutely love it. You know, that, that's something I love too. Cause I, you know, I dabble in landscapes, portraits, all forms, all different kinds of genres of photography. And um, I think it's so cool when you see experienced photographers that say do just primarily landscapes. And then one day they're like, you know, what, I'm going to try light painting. And then they rock at it. <laughs> you know, so it, it, I, I love that. And it's just uh, it's it's taking those fundamental photography um, things that you learn from other genres and then you incorporate it into a different genre and, and you, you do just amazing stuff. So it's I really love hearing and seeing stuff like that. Um, let me uh, let me share. I'm sorry. Were you saying something? No, I was just going to say, um, I think one of the things that really draws me into light painting is to have the background of drawing and painting. And I think that was the one thing that I really missed, right? That physical, mm -hmm. just the drawing and the painting and something about the light painting is like, you're physically doing that now. You know, I'm like literally painting with light. That's, I think that's what really got me hooked on this. It's, it's a feeling expression of myself again, just being able to literally paint with light again. I, that That's the one that I missed back in school, back in college, just that paintbrush. And I feel like I have it again with, um, with light and just, you know, just expanding on the creativity. Awesome. Well, you do it very well, man so much all right i'm gonna share my screen here for our next uh all right so um you know what's what's cool about what you're doing is you know i've seen other light painting artists use light painting brushes tools for camera rotation techniques before in their own work but more so as an element with within the image you know whether that be to um create you can't distinguish distinguish that hey that's a light painting brushes tool um you know for me what stands out the most is when I saw you do it, you can, hey, you know, that's the serpent blade, you know what I mean? And and I don't think I've, as long as I've seen camera rotations and I've seen other people create, um, uh, create camera rotation, I can't ever think of a time where you can distinctly tell what exactly it is in front of you. So um, where did, where did this inspiration come from to create, you know, this type of rotation or do it, do it in this, this kind of way? Um, you know, I, like I said, I've dabbled in the rotation a little bit. It was mostly, you know, it was, it was almost like I was waiting until Christmas time, right? I'd go outside and, you know, going out in the front yard, Christmas lights, and just trying to mess around with the rotation, seeing what kind of effects I can get. And, you know, I knew you know, can't leave the Christmas lights to see you around. Um, but then looking like storefronts and I'm trying to get into storefronts and, you know, something just, you know, I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, 
could we do something stationary, right? And, and you know, the, the light painting brushes tools, I mean, they're they're an art piece itself, right? Think about the the serpent blade and, and the unicorn. I mean, it's it's an artistic piece there. And I said, you know, we can literally light that up and use it as an element, as a design element, and, you know, see how that can work. And, you know, the cool thing about rotation that I'm starting to learn, again, by no means am I an expert, I'm still learning. Um, but just think about like how many, what degrees you're rotating, how you're playing with it. Like you can literally see the shape of the tool as many times as they're rotating, they're kind of blending together. You can't really tell what it is and it's just making a really cool element. Um, so again, just kind of a, a lot of experimentation. Um, kind of yeah, I, I like speaking of experimentation. I, I love this right here with the glitter stick. I thought that was a cool, cool element. Love that, uh, that effect there um, that you created. Thank you. And then uh, you can see here, so. right behind me with the curtain. Um, I used to try to do this in my garage, um, you know, pitch black in there and kind of got it taken over by a bunch of stuff. So I kind of moved in here where my office is. And, you know, for a while I was kind of fighting that I had, you know, this curtain behind and starting to pick it up. And I was like, why couldn't I use that to the advantage? And I tried to, let's see if I just light up the curtain and get the textures there. there. And then as you start rotating, it's making more texture. So I was trying to use that to an advantage now. So trying to continue with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and that was my next question running right into that, you know, your setup here. Um, so this is just where you're at right now with the curtain behind you and just setting out the tools on the table there. So, yeah. so I have um, current setup right now is um, just, you know, one of those big foldable tables, black cloth over it, um, just to get a little bit more height. I have um, my, uh, like a case underneath the, the um <clears throat> And I just start laying out different elements and, you know, again, just trial and error, try and see like, you know, again, in this setup, you know, if, if how that's going to rotate in the middle with something offset, maybe a little bit further behind um, and just see, see how the design comes out. Awesome. Um, yeah. So this image, man, this is, this is the one that it jumped out. And, you know, the funny thing is um, I have a hard time in light paintings with, with the color red. It's, it's my least favorite color. So I, I tend to go towards, you know, maybe more Aurora-ish colors, if you want to say, or, and I, I love, I love deep oranges, but red, I kind of tend, there's not a lot of red work that I've done, but this man works so well. That red is absolutely beautiful on the unicorn there and, and with the orange, um, you know, I, I even jotted down here that this, this made the image more powerful is something that grabbed me when I saw it. Um, and, and it actually inspired me. And one of the cool thing is, if you've noticed, and this this is a um, you know hats off to you. Um, after you shared this, look how much camera rotation started. Uh, everybody started doing it. So, and, and that that's a credit to you, man. Um, you 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 shared this image, and then it just snowballed from there. So whether you know it or not um you're you you've created this little movement right now of a lot of camera rotation going on i no thank you just I, wanted I just wanted to point that out so thank you I, I definitely can't take credit for that but thank you no, that, um, did you know right away that this was a winner when you when like what did you feel like when you saw the back of your your screen and and you saw this rotation so this one's specific well in 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 all of the rotations i've been doing again it's a lot of trial and error doing it a couple times this one in particular um you can actually see there's a i might have missed a couple of the <laughs> um the rotations uh when it was going by degrees but um you know something about this like i had this good feeling about it and beforehand again it was the curtains kind of throwing me off and just the way it was set up and um you know i, I finished up the exposure stopped to turn it on and you know the back of the camera lit up and it's that it's that magical moment right like you know a lot of people that i talk to especially knowing that i'm a designer um oh it's photoshop it's photoshop but it's that that moment where literally the back of the camera down. lights up and and you see what's there and you're just either a you're blown away or like oh got to do that over and and with this one in particular it was I saw it, I like, I jumped, you know, I got super excited about it. And I think I stopped right then and there. Usually, <laughs> you know, let me do a couple more. Da, da, da. It's something about this one, I just stopped, loaded it on the computer. Um, and I, I was, you know, really surprised and happy with the results with it. Yeah, well, you should be, man. It's a, it's a beauty. Um, yeah. What camera gear are you using here? Um, you know, what what gimbal for the rotations? What What's the gear that you're using? 
Um, so camera wise, uh, my primary camera, it's a Canon 70D. Um, depending on what I'm shooting, if um, you know I'm outside doing landscape, I like to shoot wide a lot. So I got a Sigma um, ultra wide is a 10 to 20 millimeter. Um, or, you know, for close up stuff like this, I was using the 18 to 135. For the gimbal, I'm going to see if I can bring this up without dropping it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a newer gimbal tripod. You can kind of see how the setup is. Um, literally just right on the tripod. I have the camera mounted. Um, that's basically what I'm using. Um, and that that flip screen is is a handy. I I still shoot on a Canon 60, and it doesn't have a flip screen, but um, so it's kind of harder to find the right gimbal. But yeah, that's that's nice to have that that element. No, it's it's great. You got to be careful. What I've noticed sometimes, depending on um, how it is with the flip screen, just as it's rotating, get a little too close to the bottom, like kind of click a little bit. But um, but yeah, no, it's it's great because then you know once you know you see it right away. But um, I have that. Um, for the rotation, just trying to keep a uh, sense of the degrees I'm turning. I'm using an app in the phone just for uh, a level app, just mounted on the top of the camera. But that's a basic setup. So primary camera is the Canon. I'm starting to dabble in. I ended up getting uh, an Olympus M1 Mark II. Um, so I'm starting to dabble in that with the live composite too. So, But again, something about, you, you know, you don't see what you're doing and, and that magic of just it comes up on the screen once it's done, once the exposure is done and you see it, it's, you can't beat it. Um, Absolutely. Live composite is great, again, as a tool, kind of seeing what you're doing and you can kind of make judgments, but um, yeah, I love it. Um, you know, a, a consistent exposure through each rotation is an important element of camera rotation. I found that I actually count out loud. Um, I actually count out loud with a lot of the work that I create just to, it gives me that um, spatial awareness. I'm just, if I'm, when I'm in a dark environment, I'm literally counting my steps. I'm counting where I'm at. And I know if I go that way, one, two, three, I have to come back one, two, three, or one, two, three. And that's, that's something I, I've, I've learned, but I do the same thing with camera rotation. Um, so when I, when I rotate my camera, I pop my lens cap off one, two, three up. So every single time I do that, it's a consistency. Um, could you walk us through your process in that in that aspect um removing and putting the lens cap on is there something different that you do absolutely um no very similar um what i would say again the hardest thing for me at least with camera is getting that center right um so the very first thing i'm doing before i even start trying to find center right and i'll do like a quick test shot um i'll go at you know zero degrees go down 180, make sure to see where it's lining up. So I do a couple test shots like that. Okay, I found center, good. And I start going through the process, but it's the same kind of thing. I got the, you know, the level, I'm looking at the degrees, trying to think of how many degrees I want to, you know, do for the shot. Um, but I do the same thing with the lens cap, I'm, I'm counting. Um, I'm counting in my head, you know, two seconds, three seconds, whatever it is, it's just closing, opening and closing. Um, but that's pretty much a process. Uh, I'll do a couple times. Um, Again, playing with if I'm doing, you know, 20 degrees or, you know, uh, all the way around. But but I think that's that's the important part is just kind of keeping notice of, of how long you're keeping that um, on and off and just trying to stay consistent with that to get the exposure. Yeah, done. yeah absolutely. And that's why I, I can't just I can't do it without talking. So I have to actually count. And then I know that I'm actually being consistent as I'm saying it. So uh what light painting tools uh, were used? Obviously, Unicorn, um, you know, Plexi was used there in the painting. Um, but what what about the flashlight? Can you tell us a little bit sure. about that? And I'll, I'll share that image again um, while you're talking about that. Um, <clears throat> so I've actually, for this image and, and a lot of the images I've been doing recently, just for the setup, right, because you got to light them, I've been using a few different flashlights. Um, I'm using the uh, Soonfire D731. Um, I have the RGB critter that I've been using and the Ryu's, uh, light works from like painting, uh, like painting paradise and, uh, one of Frank's, um, light excursions, RGB light. Um, so what I'll typically do again, even for like that center piece, right? I mean, got it here, um, for that, I had the serpent, but I had a yellow color filter attached. I don't know if you can see, but, you know, just try to get that yellow and a little bit more glow to it. 
Um, with the critter, and you know, I've been seeing, you know, a lot of people have been asking um, how it attaches to light painting brushes. You know, I'm using that universal connector um, because I'm not, you know, going swinging around, like it, it's able to keep that um, pretty steady. But I think the unicorn is, I had it on a setting where it was kind of going between a red and a yellow color shining through the unicorn to get that um, that kind of glow to it. Um, yeah, that glow is, that's that's what stands out the most to me is that glow. Um, and then with the curtain, um, I attached a, uh, a hood to Frank's light. Um, I literally had it up on a tripod kind of pointing at the curtain, um, you know, trying to make it not too bright. I didn't want to go um, overexpose it or anything, but uh, just have that kind of shining on on the background with it. Um, you'll see also the squiggly lines through there. It's some EL wire. And it's hard to see, but there's these little dots that are kind of circling around it. Um, I am I am a creature of habit now. Every time I'm in a store, <laughs> Target or whatever, I'm finding all these crazy little cheap. I mean, it's this cheap little wall light that I saw it. I'm like, oh, that would be really cool to use as a tool. And I just, you know, I lit it up and had it sitting there and just, again, made it kind of a cool design on, on the tablecloth. But uh isn't that fascinating about us that that are light painters that have kids? I mean, we get to we get to be in our 30s and 40s and 50s and hang out in the toy aisles. Absolutely, <laughs> you know, so. every time, every time. Dad, can we go? No, I'm still looking at the lights. Hold on. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, uh, your camera settings. Do you do you remember what the camera settings were? Yeah. Um. You know, usually I'm I'm starting around f8, f9. Um. ISO 100. This rotation, I believe, is about six, seven minutes in total between taking, you know, lens cap on and off the entire rotation. For this one, it was, I believe, is every 20 degrees. Um, again, lens cap on and off. Awesome. Um, but usually, yeah, usually starting around F, F, F8, F9 uh, to my own situation. Well, f eight's a sweet spot, man, on, on a lot of lenses. It is just the, the sharpest point you know, for tack sharp imagery, man, it, F8 is just as awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any suggestions or important pointers uh, for others that would like to try camera rotation? Um, maybe try to create what you created? Um, you know, again, I said it before, I'm, I'm like no means an expert on it. I'm still learning, you know, um, experiment, you know, have fun with it. Um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. You know, you, you learn from your mistakes. Um, and you can grow from the mistakes. Um, from a technical standpoint, again, the hardest thing I find about it is trying to find that center. Um, try not to get frustrated. <laughs> I know I've gotten frustrated a couple of times and, you know, just, again, don't give up and just, you know, keep trying. What I, what I typically do to find center, um, you know, I'll, I'll have the tool that I'm something, you know, in, in, in that I'm focusing on. Um, just kind of line up. I get the grid lines going on in the camera. Um, even with the focus point and just, you know, doing a couple of rotations, just looking at it, making sure it is following um, and it is center and keep, you know, kind of making tweaks. Um, I've marked where I think is the kind of sweet spot on my setup um, with just some some tape, gaffer's tape that I'll know to kind of go right there when I want to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, biggest thing I would say, just, you know, have fun with it. Experiment. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, make mistakes. Um, Absolutely. And that that's what it's about. Just practice, 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 and just take ideas and grow from there. And, and yeah, it will all make sense. Um, we'll, we'll then, we'll then, what's that? I was going to say, if you do have the camera with the flip out screen, don't forget to, you know, flip it out before you put it and <laughs> right. always tighten Got the screwdriver all the time. Make sure that thing's on tight. Um, that That's the other thing, even with center, like I've noticed, like as I'm rotating, I might mistakenly kind of turn it a little bit or bump it a little bit because it wasn't tight enough and like I know I had perfect center and it's like way off right. <laughs> so, yeah, right. just definitely make sure it's tight. you also don't want to obviously drop a camera so um what what inspires you or motivates you through you know your your work in general um not, not necessarily the rotations but just uh just your work what what what's your creative vision and um you know, I know we said on the you know past couple ones too, just music. I'm I'm a huge fan of music. Um, always have some music playing while I'm while I'm painting. Um, I get back on my tool kick. You know, I'm like a tool in the background while I'm playing uh, while I'm painting. 
um, just, you know, again, experimenting and um, being inspired by others. You know, um, it, this is an incredible community where we're, we're sharing ideas, talking, inspiring others. Um, you know, again, Jason Reinhardt, even in time, Jason Page, um, my boy Will Cook, he was on last time. Um, you, know, you inspire me. Others, you know, Dennis Smith, Stephen Knight, just following other people and, you know, just learning from them and and seeing how you can push yourself and 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 get better and um yeah just sharing it with people and and um i think one of the coolest things like even like people i work with or just friends and family that were were again going back to they think it's photoshop and trying to explain it to them and um you know how the process is and and i have the big joke about like oh well how you don't see you like when you're doing it you know, so you're acting like a ninja, you know, wearing black and you're running through the, the frame and the camera doesn't pick you up. You're acting like a ninja. But uh, just sh just sharing that with people and, and right. having them learn about it. Well, that that's awesome. And that's what, one of the greatest things I feel, you know, because I'm so involved and I've said this plenty of times, people that know me um, with so many different genres of, of photography. Um, there's no one as willing to share as far genre wise as the light painting community um, and just the uh, support that we give one another and and the sharing of ideas and techniques. And um, that's one of the beautiful things about it. So, um, yeah, thank you for being a part of our community and 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 sharing what you share. And, um, yeah, we really appreciate you. How, how can we follow along with you? Like, what's what's the best way to follow along? Um, I would say the best, most up to date uh would be my Instagram. Um, you know, I'm on I got the Facebook page as well. Um you mentioned Vero. I have the Vero account as well. Um my website is extremely out of date, but I would I would say probably uh Instagram and Facebook are the and Vero are the ones that I'm I'm constantly posting to. All right. Well, Rob, thank you so much, man. It's it's a pleasure to have you here and and I really appreciate you taking the time this evening to be with us and, and talk a little bit about yourself and, and the work you're creating. So thank you, man. Uh, thank you guys for the opportunity. I mean, this has been great. Thank you so much. Absolutely.